Yes, the 2024 Triumph Rocket 3 Storm holds the title of the largest displacement production motorcycle in the world, and for many enthusiasts, that fact alone is captivating. In the power cruiser segment, displacement and power are paramount, and the rocket delivers on both fronts. Triumph introduced this powerhouse in 2004, showcasing impressive power and enormous displacement. What's truly remarkable is how, over the past 20 years, Triumph has transformed this high-powered beast into a motorcycle that is not only easy to ride but also capable of handling corners at speed and cruising in comfort. The once heavy and somewhat outrageous power cruiser has evolved into a relevant and refined machine, addressing major criticisms of the original platform. Surprisingly, the $25,000 Rocket 3 Storm is a practical cruiser in 2024. The Rocket 3 platform underwent significant engine and chassis updates in 2019. So many of our observations align with those changes. For 2024, Triumph has introduced matte black engine finishes, two-tone paint, and an updated tune that boosts the output from the previous 165 horsepower to 180 horsepower with 166 lbft of torque. Both the R and GT models now feature new tin spoke cast wheels, reducing weight by 2.2 pounds, 1 kilogram, where it counts. Rocket 3 on the road. Triumph invited us to Cannes, France, to test the new Rocket 3 models. While I knew about Cannes' famous film festival and stunning beaches. I was unprepared for the breathtaking landscape just a few miles inland. Our test bikes were parked right in front of the hotel, with the breakwater on one side and yachts on the other. The weather was overcast with temperatures in the mid-50s, and though it had been raining for days, we were fortunate to have dry conditions. Given the hotel's beautiful location, we were eager to get out of the city and ride. With its 2.5-liter engine and wet weight of 699 pounds for the R model, 705 pounds for the GT, you wouldn't expect the Rocket 3 to handle lightly or offer great low-speed maneuverability. However, as we navigated through in-town traffic and filtered to the front at a few red lights, the R model I started on felt remarkably well-balanced and tight. The throttle response and modulation were excellent. Although the slipper-slash-assist clutch engagement felt a bit vague, it was still easy to control. The R's mid-controls provided comfortable ergonomics in town, and the short-reach handlebars were directly connected to steering action. After a brief 15 minutes through side streets and alleyways, we hit the highway and opened up the throttle. The initial throttle response is smooth and manageable in all ride modes, but when you really open it up, the rocket delivers. The 240mm wide rear tire effectively puts power to the ground with its large contact patch. You can spin the tire if you try, but only intentionally. Unlike some power cruisers, the throttle isn't twitchy or overreactive while cruising. It's easily managed, allowing riders to relax and subtle inputs won't upset the chassis or the mellow cruising vibes. GT vs R We pulled into our first coffee stop in a quaint town with cobblestone streets and a river running through its center. Journalists were eager to swap bikes to experience the key differences. The R model is the Roadster, featuring mid-mounted foot controls and shorter handlebars. The GT, or Grand Tourer, has handlebars positioned 5 inches further back compared to the R and forward foot controls. While the chassis geometry is identical for both bikes, the rider's position makes them feel like different machines. I switched from the R to the GT for our next leg. The difference was striking. The GT felt like a completely different bike with forward foot controls and pulled back handlebars. Despite my 6 foot 4 height, the forward controls still resulted in a slight over 90 degree bend in my knees. I appreciated the stretched out position of the forwards, which felt like 3 quarter mids to me, but I wished I could rotate the handlebars forward and up to alleviate the short reach, sit up and beg posture. As always, a one size fits all approach doesn't suit everyone perfectly. Our group continued along the river, moving further from Can and carving through canyons with towering cliff faces. The rivers beside us flowed with bright blue water, cascading over white rocks. It reminded me of Montana, but with the added charm of centuries, old churches on bluffs and cafes older than the United States. Handling. We stopped for lunch and discussed the bikes, aware that the more aggressive riding portion lay ahead. Those of us who had tested the 2019 update acknowledged that this year's changes are mostly cosmetic, 
but the lighter wheels do seem to make a slight difference in handling. The increased power, as shown in the updated rocket's torque curve, is primarily noticeable at higher engine speeds. Given the bike's immense power output, you only reach those higher revs when pushing the engine hard. While the added power is impressive and noticeable if you're pushing the 180 horsepower capabilities, how many riders will actually test these limits? We continued along the riverside on perfectly paved roads, surrounded by stunning scenery. As the group grew more comfortable on the bikes, our speed increased. Entering turns at higher speeds, the Rocket 3 can give the sensation of coming in too hot. There's a point in the handling where the bike comfortably tips to just above its foot-peg scrape point, but requires real effort to push beyond that. However, it can be done if needed. The bike has a slight understeer at speed, but with proper body positioning and effort, you can utilize those extra few degrees of lean. Understanding body geometry can instill confidence in the rocket's handling. The lean angles for the R and GT are similar, but the R's mid controls make it easier to shift your body, allowing you to scrape later if you're willing to put in the effort and hang off the bike. Front Suspension and Brakes The front suspension features a Showa 47mm inverted cartridge fork with adjustable compression and rebound. The rear shocks are fully adjustable Showa units with hydraulic preload adjustment. This sophisticated suspension setup is complemented by high-spec Brembo 4-piston calipers on both the front and rear, each equipped with optimized cornering ABS. This combination provides exceptional feel and a high level of control. Whether you're pushing the limits of the rocket's performance or cruising along comfortably, the finely tuned components ensure a satisfying ride. We paused for one more coffee and had the chance to choose which bikes to finish our trip on. While the GT's relaxed ergonomics are appealing, the more direct handling of the shorter bars and mid-controls on the R model is ideal for the winding French mountain roads. Leaving our final stop, we descended from the mountains through Grasse into Nice, and then back to Cannes, navigating through heavy traffic, steep hills, and the city's walking streets. During the roughly 45-minute stop-and-go ride, I may have only touched my feet to the ground once. The Rocket 3's balance is remarkable. As we returned to sea level and entered the city center of Cannes, the bike's commanding presence was unmistakable. It sounds like a muscle car and demands attention. The engine is enormous. The wheelbase is long, but the fit and finish are spectacular, with every piece feeling premium. The fact that Triumph has sold over 18,000 Rocket 3 models since 2019 speaks volumes. This bike still commands an intimidating presence proudly displaying 2,500 cubic centimeters on the side of the engine, yet it doesn't demand expert skills to harness its power.